This is the horror story about something very bad that happened to our neighbors back in the day in 1998 in Johannesburg, South Africa. We were at our family home. We had been there for about 15 years, very happy. One day we got some new neighbors, Darren and Jane, very, very nice people. They had a teenage daughter, probably about 15 or 16 at the time as well as a one-year-old daughter. Very friendly people, uh, we were friendly with them, we'd often speak to them and you know nothing strange to suspect or anything like that. And a year went past and we started um, hearing from Jane that she wasn't very well. She started getting sick particularly at night which was very very strange and nobody could figure it out and she started thinking it's something to do with the house or the feng shui or the way the furniture is and they went to seek um, a whole lot of different advice from people that were spiritual, non-spiritual. They were told that yes, there is something wrong with the house, evil spirits, something to do with that, and um, it was driving them crazy. So they did exactly what they were told to do, what was suggested to them, move furniture around, place things in different places, and it didn't stop. She kept getting sick. She was getting admitted to hospital, I don't know, every two weeks or something like that. It was quite intense. Nobody could work out what was going on. They ran medical tests, they did scans, they did absolutely everything and they said, well, we can't find anything wrong. So they just, you know, kind of then assumed there's something to do with anxiety that's, that's making her go crazy, making her sick. So off she went to a psychologist, she went on medication, she had never been on medication before, nothing helped. It just she kept getting these symptoms, she was very very sick, she was throwing up at night, um, she was falling over and nobody could figure that out until the one day Darren started getting very suspicious of their daughter's boyfriend. They couldn't really figure out exactly how it could be him, he just had this instinct, this feeling, didn't really know what to do with it. And you know in those days we, no one really had uh, CCTV cameras in their houses, they did exist. Um, he happened to have one of those big chunky video cameras and he hid it in a very concealed um, place with some shirts and washing, I don't know exactly how he did it. And what happened was that before supper on certain nights the boyfriend would be caught um, sprinkling some sort of a white powder onto her food, specifically on Jane's food. He wasn't able to successfully do this every single night in case he got caught, there were people around, so this is why it wasn't very consistent. You know, to his shock, he didn't know exactly what was going on. He then got the law enforcement involved and they did the investigation and they realized that um, this in fact was poison they found on him. He was arrested. Um, he was then let go on bail. He came back, he then took their daughter, convinced her that he needs to go with her. They landed up in a car accident where he didn't make it and she was absolutely fine, not a scratch. And later on it turned out that Jane had a life policy that if something happened to her, a lot of money, a big amount of money would go to her daughter. And this guy thought that he could convince her to marry her at a very young age and he could take all of her money. So he thought this was a really great way to get some money out of it and extort it. You know, it just goes to show you that justice was served, although he didn't get to suffer in jail at the end. Jane recovered, everyone recovered and uh, thank goodness their daughter was okay at the end of the day. If it wasn't for the quick thinking of Darren and the investigating type of mindset that he had, um, you know, that Jane could have actually lost her life and it's quite dangerous and, you know, there's a lot of these things going on and this is something that's such a long time ago and you never think that it would happen in a, in a family that you know that lives next door to you in a fairly normal suburb, you know, with a, f a fair amount of wealth and, and all of that. So the moral of the story here is if you do something bad, you are going to end up getting caught. And sometimes it can be worse in this case with this guy um, not making it out alive. Um, and the great thing is that Jane, Darren and her family to this day, they're a lot older now. You know, they managed to learn from this and to appreciate life more. And although it was very, very traumatic, I just thought it was a very inspiring story because not, not a lot of people will just pick themselves up or, or are physically able to, mentally able to pick themselves up just like that. You know, and carry on with something like that. They still stay in the exact same house. And I just think that something like that is amazing. People like that are amazing. And I want to share that story. Always trust your instincts. If you suspect something is going on, just investigate it a little bit. You owe that to yourself. If you're wrong, you're wrong, great. Um, if you're right, well, then you can make a change. Thank you again to all of you that watch our content. We really appreciate it. Please give us a thumbs up. Please share with your friends and family. And don't forget to subscribe. It really helps us gain traction on our videos. And it really helps us with our YouTube channel. So until next time, be kind to others. Cheers.